Welcome to the No BS Tour of the CMMI for Development. This is a series of short videos that explain in a common sense way what the CMMI is about, how it's structured, why it's useful, and the elements of the model. In this segment, we'll look at the process areas that help an organization capitalize on the learning and improvement at the project level and leverage it across projects. Essentially, it involves having a focus on improvement at the organization level, usually by means of an improvement team, having a place to store and retrieve process and performance information, including standard processes and tailoring guidelines, and making sure everyone is skilled in the areas that are critical to the organization. So let's start with the improvement focus. The organizational process focus area is fundamentally about three things. Identifying improvement opportunities based on a clear understanding of the organization's strengths and weaknesses, planning and testing improvements, and deploying improvements across the organization. Improvement opportunities are identified through a clear understanding of the organization's process-related needs and its current capability as seen in these practices. Once the improvements are identified, implementation is planned and implemented, and finally deployed across the organization. Note that a process improvement can be a template or a revision, that's an asset, or a standard process, one that fits the majority of the work done in the organization. Along with the standard process comes guidance for tailoring that process as needed to meet a particular project's needs. The implementation is monitored for effectiveness and lessons gathered or turned into lessons learned through process revision and improvement. But all this stuff has to be housed somewhere, and that's discussed in the organizational process definition process area. This process area describes the country store where you can find everything you might need as a new employee to help you understand the way work is done in your organization. You'll find standard processes and descriptions of approved life cycles, tailoring guidelines and criteria for making those tailoring choices, metrics from the projects that have been done to help you estimate accurately and manage your project, and a library of alternative ways to perform work that have been identified, evaluated, and shown to be effective. There are also some guidelines for what st your standard work environment looks like and how to set up or participate on a project team. The storehouse can get built in two ways, bottom up or top down. The bottom up approach starts with projects, identifies how their work is done, standardizes workflow activities and techniques that are common, and includes alternative ones as appropriate based on their effectiveness or efficiency. From there, a process architecture is established, which includes standard steps and alternatives to allow for project variability. Along the way, project artifacts are collected, rationalized, improved, and made available for other projects to use, and tailoring guidelines provide guidance on how to use them effectively and when. The top-down approach usually starts with a standard life cycle process and documentation that everyone follows, and as projects incur challenges, those assets are revised for specific purposes. As a collection of exceptions grows, the standard process becomes a process architecture, with the same kinds of alternatives available in the bottom-up implementation and approach. The bottom-up approach takes longer, but creates a richer source of information than the top-down approach. Most organizations, though, prefer the top-down approach because it sets an early benchmark from which to innovate. The challenge here is to actively encourage projects to identify exceptions, try something new, and report on the utility of the new work activity, template, or technique. This storehouse, or process asset library, is pretty useless unless it's used. The integrated project management process area focuses on using the assets in the storehouse to define a process for that project based on the set of life cycles, techniques, processes, and sub-processes, templates, and the like, so that the project can best meet specific customer requirements or constraints. For example, if time to market is the driver, the PM would assemble the most efficient set of processes for the project's defined process. Then perhaps add in extra peer review cycles to capture the defects that efficiency can incur at the expense of effectiveness. Now none of this can be done effectively without the knowledge and skills to use the processes, perform the work, manage the project, and collect and report standardized metrics back to the repository for use by other projects. That's what the organizational training process area is for. The CMMI specifies that some sort of training capability needs to be in place for skills and knowledge that the organization determines is appropriate for general use. That function, whether formal or informal, should identify strategic needs, identify which of those are the organization's responsibility and which might be specific only to a few projects, put a plan in place and provide the capability to deliver the skills and knowledge. Then the training function provides those skills and knowledge, 
keeps records so that those who've taken the training, or those who already have the skills and are, and are exempt, know what's next in their growth. Further, those skills and knowledge need to be evaluated against the training activities to provide information for improving the training itself. So these process areas provide an infrastructure for capturing project information, characterizing it, generalizing it where appropriate, and ensuring that it is accessible